Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the perfect technique for wedges. Hey guys, Eric here outside at the Bethlehem Golf Club. I want to talk to you today about wedges. Now, before we dive into wedges, two things quick. Number one, we have launched all of our two-day golf schools. If you are interested in coming to Bethlehem PA for us with two uh, for a two-day full golf school immersion event, really the best way we know how to take your golf game to the next level, we'd love to have you here. We will put a link in the description with all of the details below. Now, if you can't make it in person, we did build our community at Cogorno Golf for just that reason. At Cogorno Golf, it's a really a lot of step-by-step, -step, really guided learning. Tons of different courses, there's a quick fix section, practice sections, and as well as our Facebook community where you can actually post your swings and get my feedback and guidance and join our community of golfers trying to get better. Would love to see you guys there. Now let's talk about the perfect technique for wedges. And really what I want to talk about in this video is technique for the wedge shots that aren't quite the chip shots around the greens, but aren't quite the full pitching wedge shot either. That zone in between those two, perhaps from about 30 through about 100 yards. So let's talk about these wedge shots. Now, the wedge shots from about 30 through 40 or 50 or 60 yards, the setup pieces and a lot of the in-swing principles are really gonna be the same as the chipping pieces. So if I were to take my uh, chipping setup, what I wanna talk about first are, what are the setup pieces involved here? What are the backswing pieces? And what are the downswing and follow through pieces? Our goal with these wedges is proximity to the hole from 20, 30, 40, 50, up to 100 yards, that's a scoring range for us. We wanna be able to hit the ball as close to the hole as possible. What's involved with hitting the ball as close to the hole as possible? It's really two things. Number one is having a stock setup and mechanical system for solidness of contact. If you don't hit the ball solid, it's really hard to control the direction or the distance. So solidness of contact would be priority number one. Once you have the pieces in for solidness of contact, the next part that we have to do is the distance control. Now hopefully you've seen our previous videos, maybe we'll put a link in here or a link below to show you those videos of how to build a distance system. What I wanna talk about here are the mechanics. So what do I need to do from a 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up to about 100 yard wedge shot? Let's start with the setup pieces. So from face on, there's a couple things that we're gonna adjust relative to a full swing. If I took my full swing setup with a wedge, that would look something like this. Now here would be my 30 or 40 or 50 yard technique. Here's full swing. Here is my 30, 40, 50. Now what changed between those two? Well, there's a couple things changing. Number one, my feet got a lot closer together. Here's my full swing. Here's my wedge shot. So I want the feet close together to the point where your heels are almost touching. The front foot is flared a little bit, which creates a little bit of an open stance, but the feet should be very close together from 30, 40, 50 yards, we don't need a lot of power. We do need precision. So there's no need for me to have wide feet so I can shift pressure and get power. We want precision, feet close together. The ball position doesn't change all that much. The ball position should be just inside of the right heel, maybe just back of center for a stock shot. Now also from here, my feet got closer. I also got quite a bit closer to the ball. Um, but from the face on angle, the differences you would see would be feet closer, ball position inside the right heel. The handle location is gonna be just inside left thigh, not drastically forward, not back, just inside left thigh. Those would be the three pieces that I'd focus on from face on for the setup adjustments. Now from the down the line version, here's my full swing wedge setup. Here is my chipper pitch shot setup, full swing, wedge on. Now what changed? Well, mainly the thing that changed is I got closer to the ball. My feet got closer to the ball. And because my feet got closer, I'm also gripping down on the club quite a bit. How much should you grip down? Quite a bit. I would overdo, not underdo the gripping down portion. Now also, because I got closer to the ball, you'll notice the shaft angle will raise a little bit. So my shaft angle is not going to be super low. My shaft angle will raise slightly. So close enough to the ball with the feet close together and gripping down enough. The error I see all the time here from these distances are the feet stay too wide, I stay too far from the ball, I don't grip down, and my ball position remains the same, and that can be some issues with the contact. So if I were just gonna hit a baseline 30, 40, 50, I'll do a 50 yarder. Those would be the pieces. Feet close, ball inside right heel, shaft just slightly forward, 
face should be square or slightly open. I prefer it to be just a smidge open to use some bounce. And that would be the setup pieces that I would be looking for on a stock 50 yard wedge shot. Now, the other thing that I wanna make sure you guys are aware of that comes up a lot with the setup that causes contact issues is the shoulder tilt. So when I take my setup position, I do not want a lot of shoulder tilt. I don't want my right shoulder much lower than my left. The reason being, the more I tilt my shoulders to the right or right side bend, the higher the likelihood is that the club uh, hits the ground behind the ball or my low points behind the ball, meaning too much tilt would mean some fat and thin contact. So when we take our setup, I'd like for you to have your shoulders more or less level with just a little bit of tilt because your trail hand is lower on the grip there's gonna be a little tilt, but thinking pretty darn level with that. So feet close, ball inside right heel, handle just inside left thigh, face is square, slightly open, pretty level with my shoulder alignment. Let's go ahead and pitch one more from there, good. And then the last little piece with the setup that I think is relevant is where your chest or sternum is or where your shoulder alignment is. So when I take this uh, setup position, if we're going for solidness of contact and we're focused on the low point or where the club hits the ground, I don't wanna have my shoulders too closed. I'd say having your shoulders too closed would be a bigger problem than having them too open. Shoulders too open would mean low point more forward, better chance of good contact. Shoulders too closed, again, same issue as too much tilt, low point behind the ball, fat and thin. So a quick little check with that would be, hey, I'm gonna take my normal setup positions. And if I were to get my shirt buttons or my sternum location, if 12 o'clock is the golf ball, just slightly forward of that, maybe towards about 11 o'clock, would open my shoulder line up a little bit, would help with my low point. So feet are very close, ball inside right heel, handle just inside left thigh, face pretty squared open, shoulders are level, chest is slightly forward. There's my technique for stock shots. Now again, if I'm hitting these 50 yard shots, I'm not thinking about any of that, right? But if you don't have those pieces in, you need to use those as checkpoints. Those would be the setup pieces for these wedge shots that are relevant for solidness of contact. If you don't get those, the rest of the in-swing pieces we're gonna talk about now are less relevant. But after we get those setup pieces, there's also backswing and follow-through pieces. Let's talk about those next. Okay, so let's assume that we have the setup pieces proper. Let's talk about the backswing pieces. Now there's a bunch of things we could talk about with the backswing. Um, I'm gonna highlight a few that I think are the most important. The first one is swing plane. So the biggest issues I see for this video, which is solidness of contact, is the swing plane. Similar to having too much tilt or having the shoulders too far to the right, the issue that I see mostly here is that the swing plane, if you go too far inside, during the backswing, that typically is gonna cause more problems than if you went too far outside. So the idea during the backswing, if I drew a line right up the shaft line, would be to get that club head working right up that plane line to the point where when it's parallel to the ground, the club's about even with the hands. Now, if I wasn't gonna hit that spot, I would prefer us to have the club head slightly outside of that here, not my hands out with it, my club head a little more outside. If I go too far inside early, the issue is that with wedges, it's a really short swing. So I don't have time to make up for that. With a long swing or full swing, if you go inside, which I still wouldn't prefer, at least you have time to make up for it. If I go inside early, I don't have time, which means I'm gonna come down in the ball too much too shallow from the inside, fat and thin. So if we take our setup, I want that club head working pretty much neutral right down the, the line here. And if you're not sure that you're doing that correctly or not, the best way to check that is with video feedback. There's some different drills I could give you to fix that, but video feedback would be the ultimate. And if you see your club heads working too far inside, work to get that club head a little bit higher and outside. That would be the first thing with the backswing that you'll see there. That's a commonality amongst good um, wedge players in this zone, club head on plane during the backswing. The next thing to discuss is how the hands and wrists work. Should I hinge the club? Should I not hinge the club? How wide or narrow would I go? And there's different ways to do it, which we'll get to based on trajectory. But the idea here would be you don't want the hands to travel no nothing and to hinge a lot on both sides. And you don't really necessarily want a ton of travel with no hinge on both sides. You kind of want a happy medium. There should be a progressive amount of hinge from zero through full hinge. And then there should be an, a releasing of the hinge during the down. So during the backswing, to keep it simple, I would say the hands need to move some amount 
Make sure they get outside your thigh and they travel some amount. And there should be a gradual hinging motion. And how much you do those two is gonna depend a little bit on the trajectory, which we'll get to later. So backswing, you know, make sure you have those setup pieces. Make sure that club's on or slightly outside the plane, not too far inside would be the piece to check. Let's talk a little bit about the downswing follow through. Okay, downswing follow through for the wedges. Now in terms of contact, there's a couple key points that we wanna consider. We said on the backswing, we wanna get the club head riding right up the plane or just slightly outside of that. You know, during the backswing, you wanna make sure that club face isn't way too tilted down. We'd like the club face to be more or less toe up here. Even slightly open with the wedges would be better. It gives you more bounce to use during the downswing. So we wanna watch that club face. Now, if we have ourselves in a good position on the way down, the initial transition phase should be pretty simple. We're not coming way more from inside. I don't want you to come way over the top. You're more or less just riding that plane line back down into the follow through. Now, the first thing that's important in the follow through is that you support it with a chest turn. So in terms of solidness of contact, I still need to have some pivot or some turn there. I like a lot of players to feel at their shirt buttons or their chest, make sure they finish at the target. You should be feeling the weight of the club head. You should be letting the shaft do the work and letting your chest turn and support that. It's not like a full swing where it's driven by the chest. It's that the arms and hands and club are almost working down first and your chest is supporting. That's the feel that we're going here with the uh, wedges. So I'm gonna make my backswing on plane. I'm gonna let that club head work down. I'm gonna let my uh, chest support it. So by the time I get done, if you look at my finish position, my shirt buttons and my belt buckle are fully facing the target. I want to avoid anything here where I'm trying to keep my head down and keep my shirt buttons or chest back. That increases the odds of fats and thin. So if I was really focused on solid contact first, I would really focus on getting the chest turn. Good setup position, club head on plane on the way back, face square or slightly open, and let my chest and shirt buttons turn on the way through. Now, one other point during the downswing for the stock shots is uh, how much shaft lean you should have. I see a lot of people come in with the wedges who struggle with contact, who have this model of the ball very far back, weight forward, hands too forward, and they're really trying to get the handle drastically forward. Now, the issue with that is you have no bounce. It's all leading edge. Your timing and precision need to be very, very good there. I would prefer for these shots that we only have a minimal amount of shaft lean. So, if we're starting with the hands inside left thigh, by the time I get back down to impact, I only want to return about that same spot. Just not quite 90, but a little bit past it. I don't want drastic shaft lean here for these stock shots. You want to feel like that, you're feeling the weight of the club head, the shaft's getting just past 90 here, back on plane with some supported chest turn. So we'll do one more just stock one. Feet are close together, ball inside right heel, face square slightly open, hands inside left thigh. Shoulders are square, chest slightly forward. I'm on plane with a squared open face. A little bit of cup there on my left wrist is okay. Back on plane, I'm feeling the weight of the club and I'm supporting it with a chest turn, fully turned at the finish for my stock shots. And those would be my 50 yard stock shots. And those same principles apply whether I'm going 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Now, I do wanna talk about one other piece which is how you're gonna control the trajectories with this but those are the pieces that are relevant for solidness of contact in the setup, backswing, and downswing follow through. Okay, so the last piece of wedges, um, again, when you're doing um, wedge improvement or you're trying to get better at your wedges, you should follow sort of a systematic approach. It should be solidness of contact first, it should be distance control second, and then it should be trajectory control third. It should be boom, boom, boom. That's what we do in our schools, that's what we do on CorvonoGolf.com. It's one, two, three with the skills. So, Let's say you get past that phase we just talked about, about solidness of contact. Let's say you've watched our two other videos on the wedges, you've built in a system, and you're ready for something a little bit more advanced in terms of the trajectories. Let's go over the basics involved with how to do that. Now, if I wanted to hit my stock trajectory shot, I'd have the same things that we just talked about. Ball inside of the right heel, shaft neutral, weight neutral. If I wanted to hit a low shot, I would change the setup and the follow through mostly. To change the trajectories, I would change setup and follow through. For the low shot, I'd make the ball go slightly farther back from inside of my right heel to the middle of my right toe. My hand stays the same spot inside left thigh, but because the ball's farther back, I now have more shaffling. The face goes from slightly open to now square. I change nothing with my backswing, so still get it um, right on plane. But in the follow through there, now I'm gonna change some pieces. 
when I want to hit a low shot, right, here's my normal follow through. Here would be my low. So when I want to go low, my hands go farther from my body, wider arc, and the club head stays lower than my hands. That would be a low trajectory. So the follow through pieces would go low, medium, high. Low shot, medium shot, high shot. And you'll notice one other piece change when we do those follow through pieces. Low shot, arm straighter, uh, butt of the club farther, club head low. Medium, little bit of arm bend, shaft and club head more neutral. High, lots of arm bend, shaft closer, club head very vertical. That's how you control trajectory. So low shot, ball back, hands are now same spot, they're more forward. I throw a little more weight on my left leg, maybe 60, 40 now instead of 50, 50. And I'm trying to hit that follow through portion where I get it farther away from me. That would be the low trajectory shot, part number one. Medium, we would do just like we did before. Ball inside right heel, weight is 50-50, shaft still inside left thigh, club face slightly open, but now on my follow through, I'm letting a little bit more hinge, club head finishes a little higher, arms are a little more bent. And then if we're going for the higher shot, ball goes a little more forward, face more open, same backswing things, but now I'm gonna go even higher, arms more bent, club head higher, re-hinging more in the follow through. Club face forward, that would be my high shot there. And really what's changing a lot in the height in the follow through is the hinging amount. Low shot, club head stays unhinged. Medium shot, there's a little bit of re-hinging. High shot, there's a lot of re-hinging. Those would be the pieces that change. You change the setup and the follow through pieces. Now what's kind of cool with this is when you do your distance control system, the high shot and the low shot are always just one distance above and below. Let me explain what I mean. When you have the system in place, which you'll see in those videos, uh, it's based on where your hands go relative to a body part. So for 50 yards, for me, it's hands to hip, hands to hip. So a stock shot, I go hip, hip, and that's 50 yard shot for me. Now a low 50 is just a 40 yard swing length. It's kind of cool how it works out. A lower 50 is just a 40 yard swing length. So 40 yards for me is pocket to pocket. So for 50 yards, I want to go low. I do the setup adjustments. I do the follow through adjustments. I just use my 40 yard swing length and that ball now goes 50. And then a high 50 is just a 60 yard swing length. So for me, 60 yards is just above hip, just above hip. So I would use that swing length with the setup and follow through pieces for the 50, for the high 50. So when you put your system in, that's why it works so good. You have a normal trajectory. It's a little bit more advanced. We have a normal trajectory. Hip, hip for me is 50. 40 or a, a, a low 50 is just a 40 yard swing length, pocket, pocket. And then a high 50 is just a 60 yard swing length. That's how cool that swing system is. So I can't urge you enough to go watch those videos and put a system in after you've done the solid contest. So remember one more time, do the setup pieces, do the backswing and follow through pieces, hit it solid first then build a system, then build trajectory control. That's how you start to inc uh, get your proximity to the hole closer, hit it closer in that 30 to 150 range where we can say par more, we can make birdies more. So that's the perfect technique for the wedges. Hopefully you guys spend some time practicing this. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe if you haven't. Another reminder, we are live every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Rapid Fire Golf. We'd love to see you guys there.